Good afternoon, guys. Hope everybody's doing good. Um, we'll go uh, next week. I think we'll go at 11 on Monday. Um, because it's a bye week, and then we won't do anything on Thursday. So uh, we'll be out on the road. Um, so that'll be our plan for next week. Um, as for this week, uh, really excited about the opportunity to go play Washington up in Seattle. And um, it's uh, going to be a great environment. We always expect. Uh, I've played, played UW when I was at UCLA up there. It's a great environment, obviously, coaching for the Seahawks. I know how much football matters in Seattle, and um, so that should be uh, should be exciting for our players. Players had a really good practice yesterday, really good practice Tuesday. They uh, are excited to get back out and compete, um, as uh, what usually happens when you don't play your best game the week before. Uh, want, you want to get back out there and play. I think they're a very good football team, Washington, certainly uh, playing outstanding on offense. Uh, excited to see the two quarterbacks duel it out. Um, I think they're one and two right now in passing in the Pac-12. Excited to see the receivers duel it out. I think they're one and two and three in receiving. Um, I believe I looked, they have, I think their receivers are two and seven or two and five in the Pac-12 and ours are one and three right now. And then you have T-Mac as well. Um, so there's gonna be some great battles if you look at it offensively on the two sides. Um, I know that uh, our defense is excited about going out there and uh, playing this team and doing everything they possibly can to continue to improve and get better. Um, that should be a, a you know really excited for our guys, for our defensive players. They they are they're fired up to go out and play. And um, I know our DBs know what a great challenge it's going to be um, to cover their receivers, and uh, they're excited about that opportunity. Christian Rowan Wallace, uh, Stuxy. And then obviously our safeties and nickel as well. And then, um, you know, it's up to a good pass rush this week. You know, you need to have a good pass rush if you're going to play a good football team. So they've done a great job on offense. Um, number one offense in the Pac-12, I believe. Top 10 nationally in total offense. And, um, you know, second in the country uh, throwing the football. So should be a good one. Speaking of defensive backs, it seems like DJ Warnell is kind of ascending in that area, how would you describe just sort of his, his time here as the path that he's taken to, to earn that spot? Yeah, so DJ will start on Saturday. And um, he has, he's really embraced this uh, opportunity of um, coming here, transferring here. Uh, comes in with a fantastic attitude every single day, huge smile on his face. Uh, and really started working his way up through special teams. If you look at where his initial impact came, uh, it was his production on special teams. He kept uh, making tackles, uh, was great effort on kickoff and punt coverage. And now um, he's beginning to show up there on the defensive side as well. And uh, he should give us a nice, nice big body in there and a very good cover guy. When you guys were trying to figure out what position he really wanted to play, what was just kind of the message to him just to stay patient? Yeah, you know, we, we moved him around, you know, he's a safety, then linebacker, then star. And so he's kind of had three different spots since he's been here in terms of really trying to figure out what was going to be the right thing for him. And while that was going on, we kept emphasizing the importance of special teams, the kicking game, the kicking game. Make your impact in the kicking game and then good things will come your way. Uh, when it came down to it, we felt that uh, he was more of a safety than a linebacker. And uh, then we felt like, you know, he had very good coverage skills and tackling skills. So the right position for him was what we identify as the star. Um, and that's what, uh, that's what he'll be playing and what he did play all last week as well. With uh, how so, right in, do you think he'll be ready to go? Uh, I think Mike will be maybe uh, ready if called upon, but uh, I don't think he's necessarily in a spot where we're going to start him. Uh, we'll start uh, Jonah Coleman this week. When you watch tape after a game, like a lot of times we'll look at analytical stuff, like PFF and all that. How much analytic, how analytic driven are you in the coaching style? Uh, not overly analytic in regards to what um, the grading scales are, let's call it. I think there's some interesting information you can uh, receive from both PFF as well as sports source analytics where they give you a lot of good data to review. Um, I think there, where the analytics 
come into play for me and for our coaching staff is more tendency driven and more along the lines of what we're calling, when we're calling it, and then um, certain decision making. Um, there's some good information you can receive, but in the end, when it comes to game management, it's more gut than it is analytics. Throughout the, the week, the Washington players have been asked about Jaden and the flag and all that. Do you have any special conversations with them or talk about that? No, that was last year. That was last year. Uh, Jaden's Jaden, um, and that was a you know that's what happened last year. I'm sure there was a lot of energy. Um, and excitement and enthusiasm when you go win the Apple Cup. And, I mean, I'm sure it was a big deal there, just like it's a big deal here when we play the team up north. When you look at your <clears throat> offensive line, um, Jordan Morgan's obviously getting a lot of NFL interest and could enter the draft. Josh Donovan's eligibility will be up, Aiden Pierce will be up. So that leaves Big Jonah and Josh Baker as maybe some building blocks. How have you seen those two guys progress? Yeah, those two guys have done – the, the two guys that are returning progress, right? That's Yeah, I think those two guys have been really, really good. Uh, Big Jonah is going to be a special player, um, not just in this league, but in f the future, uh, in the professional league at some point in time when the time is right. Uh, he has all of the tangibles and intangibles you ask for, and his work ethic has been tremendous. Uh, the way he practices, um, his always wanting to take on the best defensive players uh, in one-on-one -on -one pass rush drills, those are great indications of guys that want to become really good in their craft. Josh Baker's, um, and you guys got a, a little bit of him yesterday, I think, his maturity, his willingness to um, be a great communicator, his uh, knowledge is growing daily. And uh, you could see just from the time that all, any of us spend with him, he really has a very good feel on how to play the position and how to be a center. Uh, and then we have a lot of young guys that have been working really hard, uh, knowing that there'll be some changes on the offensive line in the future. Excited to see where a Joe Bourgeon, where a Jacob Reese um, fits in. Excited to see Sam Lange still has another year with us. Um, we still have other guys that have all been a part of you know, J.T. Han and Leif Magnuson. And then, as always, there's always going to be guys you bring in as well to continue to add your depth at that position. Yeah, you mentioned the defense and the work they're putting in. Can you know a little more detail of uh, what you saw this week that you liked as they prepare? Uh, I, like, I like to hear defensive players on the practice field. I think that's your best indication of confidence and communication. So when you go out on the practice field and you – can hear the defensive players making calls and talking and being excited and then being able to kind of indicate, like, you know, downright, downright, you know, field left. You hear all the calls that occur. Um, that communication makes a huge difference. And then when you see a play get made and then you feel the energy from the rest of the guys, uh, that tells me that there's a very, there's a nice confidence and that, that's really what we're looking for. Uh, that's always easiest. Our defensive coaches will talk about the fundamentals and the assignments and the alignments. But for me, it's what I notice on our defensive side is more of, you know, play with passion. We were talking a lot about improvement um, uh, for the defensive line and the edge guys. You mentioned the importance of a rush this weekend. Technique-wise, what would you like to see them do better to match that hope and that expectation? Uh, you know, the, the number one thing you could always say is pad level. When you're talking about the defensive line and you're talking about trying to impact plays and impact games, it's playing with great pad level. Um, that, that's number one, and that's really for the game of football, but specifically defensive linemen. The second thing is you've got to be able to improve upon your pass rush games and also your straight rush and use different tools in your toolbox you don't want to just be a guy that bull rushes or just a guy that speed rushes uh, you don't want to be a guy that only has you know one one bullet left to shoot you want to be able to have other options and other opportunities so um, that's really where I feel like our defense has worked hard they've worked together well uh, a lot of times your best pass rushes come from great coverage on the back end and other times your best rushes come from working together well with the person next to you, meaning you're a three technique, how well do you work with the shade, or you're a 
out wide rusher on the tight end, how well do you work with the guy next next to you that's lined up over the guard, and can you cause some conflict? So I've seen really good uh, usage there. And then final thing would be their hands. The more you can use your hands as a defensive lineman, the better you'll be. On Monday you had said you don't want to put pressure on the offense, that they only need to worry about themselves. But in a game that maybe is projected to be a shootout, how do you uh, avoid them thinking, well, we have to score every time, and if we don't, then it could put us potentially behind? Yeah, what I, what I would want our offense to think about is do everything you can to score every time. That should be your mindset. Um, that you shouldn't feel pressure that if you don't or if it doesn't happen, that outcome is going to be affected immediately. Um, but we want them to go out on the field with a confidence – that the the goal and our responsibility as an offensive team is to score. And then let's just take, you know, not a look at the scoreboard every three minutes. Let's look at the scoreboard at the end and see how many times we were able to execute uh, our number one goal, which is to drive the ball down and score. Brandon mentioned that uh, Washington's uh, edge rushers look like NFL guys and they have a bunch of them. How critical uh, is it to at least – hold serve in that matchup between their edge guys and your tackles. Yeah, it'll be the second week in a row, I feel, as if we're going against true NFL edge rushers, obviously two and three last week, um, fall under that category as well. Um, it's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. Those are game-changing positions. There's certain positions on a field where there's game changers. The pass rushers, the quarterback, the receiver – you know, those guys are traditionally the ones that make all, that, that can change a game, affect the game, impact the game. Um, and then, obviously, all the other positions are working hand-in-hand hand there. In this case, I, every time I've ever thought of Washington, I've thought of defense. You know, so in my mind, this is the top defense. I don't look at the stats. I look at the player bodies. And they have a lot of really, really good player bodies out there, and they have a lot of really good skills. And uh, you have to not just hold serve um, when it comes to being able to handle these two guys, but there has to be times that you win. You have to win some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups against um, those edge rushers and all four of their defensive linemen. Um, you know, their interior guys are pretty, pretty impressive as well. How are they? What's that? How did ASU beat them? Um, well, you know, there was turnovers in the game. There were field position. There were big plays. They were, you know, at home and had some good momentum, and they made some things happen. Uh, you know, it's, I'm sure that, you know, those are what happened. You know, you make a play. You get a big play. You get an interception. You, you get a turnover. You score. You do some things that occur in a game, and ASU – you know, won the game. They did a good job. And I think that they, uh, I think it was, what, 45-38 was the final. You know, that's a lot of points. It's a lot of points that they were able to put up. And uh, if you're going to beat a team that scores as much as Washington, that's about your, your best chance. Did uh, T.S. Savannah get into the game last week? No. No, he did not. Uh, I was more hopeful that, his, that he was going to be able to recover from um, – the ankle, but uh, I don't think he, uh, I don't think, I'd be surprised if he could play. Uh, we haven't talked much about special teams. I don't know if you've asked one question special teams <laughs> since uh, the start of August, but they had a really good game this last week, maybe the best unit. What have you seen just out of uh, Tyler, Kyle, and uh, Holbrook? Yeah, <laughs> the specialists in general um, have done a good job. I definitely think it was our best kicking day. Our best kicking performance was um, this past week, both Kyle's punting um, and, and then Tyler. You know, it was nice that we were able to re-kick that kick at the end of the half and, and, and nail it. But uh, his kickoffs have been really, really good. Um, and then, uh, you know, as a group, those guys take a lot of pride in what they do. But it comes down, you know, from all parts of it. Coach Pow Pow's done a great job of getting that group together, the specialist group. But if you look at our kickoff coverage units, you could see everybody trying to finish in the end zone. You see those guys coming down on the field. If they have a chance to, you know, lay a guy out, they do it. If there's a guy to tackle, they're pretty good at 
Uh, when teams are trying to take the ball out, we've done a great job of making teams go the long way. I think there's been two balls that have been uh, we've tackled inside the 20 at the 18-yard line twice, one time at the 14-yard line. So there's been some really good coverage there. Um, I thought our punt unit this past week was really good. They surrounded the punter, uh, uh, the, the returner, excuse me, and they um, pretty aggressive. DJ Warnell, Dalton Johnson have really showed up when it comes to special teams. Anthony Simpson had a great kick return, uh, and Cowing had a great punt return. So really in this pass game, we were able to do a nice job with both the punter and the kicker and then also with our kick return and our punt return. So, um, you know, that, that's been nice, and Coach Pow has done a great job there. Uh, Michael Penix as a quarterback, what's your scouting report of a guy like him? Uh, 357 yards a game, I think, is something like that. It's statistically at number one in the Pac-12 passer, top 10 in the country passer. Um, very accurate, big arm. They take shots down the field. They're willing to take, um, be very aggressive with him. He's uh, played a lot of football. He's experienced. And uh, you watch the film and you watch some of the things he's done, and there's a lot of, lot of good plays, big plays on the film. Uh, they've only punted, I believe it's been three times in the first half this season. So they don't punt a lot. They don't have a lot of three and outs. Um, you know, they're just a team that has done just a tremendous job of moving the football. And it's been, uh, and it's because of the quarterback. Thank you guys.